Well, good evening, uh, everybody. I'm good to be here again today. Um, I'm looking at Luke chapter 18. I remember doing a message on part of this, but then there was a new verse that sort of jumped at me. If you want to get your Bible and look in the Luke 18, we'll start out with verse 15. It says, And they brought unto him also infants. Now, an infant can be a one-year-old to a three- or four-year-old. An infant can be a five-year-old. But however old these infants was, they brought unto him also infants that he would touch them. Now I assume that these infants wasn't needing a healing, but it was almost sort of like the Lord wanted to favor them. And he says that he would touch them, but when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. Now, I don't think the disciples rebuked the children. I think the ones that the disciples got in Dutch with was maybe the mamas and daddies. You know, children are innocent. You know, a, a child is innocent. And he was saying here that, but when his disciples saw it or saw the infants, they rebuked them. I think they was sort of thinking that, you know, Jesus ain't got time for this. Jesus don't have time for this. So the disciples, no doubt, probably was a little bit ill at the fact that Jesus was bogged down with these, some people would call them brats. I don't think of them as brats. I mean, they're children. A child is a child that's going to be a child. I mean, that's what they are. So... But I don't think that the disciples was rebuking the children. I think they was rebuking maybe the parents or the ones that was taking the children up there to him. But I want you to notice, notice what Jesus said to the disciples. But Jesus called them unto him. Now, keep that in mind, that Jesus wanted the children to come to Jesus. And Jesus knew that these was innocent children, these was innocent kids. But it says in verse 16, But Jesus called them unto him and said, He's not necessarily talking to the children, he's talking to the to the disciples that is rebuking the children, or they're rebuking the parents that brought them. He Jesus says this, suffer the little children to come into me. Well that word suffer means to allow. Allow the kids to come unto me. Let them walk freely into my arms. Let them come equally. Uh, don't hinder not one from coming. So basically, he's saying right here, um, but let them come unto me and forbid them not. You disciples get out of the way. Don't you forbid them kids of coming here. Now, no doubt Jesus heard what they had said. 
But here we see where Jesus says, forbid them not. Don't get on to them. They're just children. They're just innocent little kids. But notice what the next part says. For of such is the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus is not talking about their age of being the kingdom of God. He's not talking about people in the kingdom of God is going to be three and four year olds. He's basically using that verse as the innocency of the children. A little child is innocent. A little child is not guilty of nothing. The child is a child. And he's saying here, for of such is the kingdom of God. Well, what Jesus was saying here was, is allow them kids to come into me. Don't hold them back. Allow them to come to my side. Allow them to come unto me. And that's what Jesus is basically saying. For of such is the kingdom of God. Talking about the innocency of a child, a childlike faith, a childlike obedience. Was the children afraid to go up to Jesus? You know, children are afraid when they go up to Santa Claus. You see videos all the time of where one and two-year-olds don't want to go up to Santa Claus because Santa Claus scares little kids. Well, was any of these kids afraid of Jesus? Did they actually know who Jesus was when the kids got up there? I don't know that they actually knew who Jesus actually was. I don't happen to think that these kids were afraid. And I'll tell you why. Because the creator of them kids designed them kids to be innocent so that them children could come to Jesus to Christ and not be in fear. And you know there's going to be a lot of people that's going to be in fear They're going to be in fear on that day of atonement, on that day of standing before the Lord. They're going to stand in fear because they know that their testimony is weak. They know that their attitude is weak. They know that their love is is not right before God, that the adults don't come to the Lord like a little child would. But I want you to look at verse 17. Verse 17 is my message. This is the verse that I didn't do the last time when I did these two verses up there where I just did. But look at verse 17. He's continuing to talk to these disciples here. Verily, I say unto you, when he uses that word verily, he's getting their attention. Sometimes Jesus will say verily, verily, two times that Jesus will say verily, verily. But here he says, verily, I say Unto you, talking about the disciples now, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. But let me tell you what I feel like that that verse there means. There's a lot of people that want to be a know-it-all. They want to be smart. 
They want to be intelligent. They want to have this um, uh, knowledge that they can make other people look like an idiot. Um, I don't try to do that. I mean, I come out here and I tell people that I realize I'm as dumb as a box of rocks, and I understand that, and I'm not trying to use that as a ploy for people to feel sorry for me. I don't have much learning. Uh, my speech is not in enticing speech. I'm just a I'm just a country boy. I was raised on a farm. Uh, I'm not going to belittle myself because of my upbringing. But what Jesus said to them, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child. A lot of times adults want to make the relationship with God hard. They want to make the relationship with God difficult. They want to make religion in Jesus Christ to be where you got to live under the law and you, and you got to make the gospel hard. You know, I, I can, let me say this, I can pride myself that when I go to the nursing home, I am not trying to pride myself into being a knowledgeable person. What I want to do is get to the point of their personal salvation in the Lord. I try not to get too deep. I try not to get over their head. I don't try to come across as a theologian, which I know I'm not. I know there's a whole lot of other people that's way smarter than I am. But guess what? They're not standing in line to go to the nursing home. They're not standing in line waiting to get into the nursing home. See, there's a lot of people that had the talent to do maybe even a better job than me. But, you know, all I do is bring them something very simple. What I see in this verse right here, where Jesus says to them, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child... Is talking about childlike belief. It's talking about belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's talking about understanding what the belief is. That's what he's talking about. He's referring to man's belief in the Lord. And sometimes we make it hard. Man wants to make it difficult. They want to throw rules at you. They want to get into a theology that if you don't toe the line on every single little tiny point, then they'll let you know that you are heathen, that you are infidel, that you are or you are wrong. I've had people to contact me and flat out just tell me that I was wrong in things. And then when you go back and you study the Bible and you look at the Bible, you know, people love to argue the Bible. I don't try to argue the Bible. I don't have to. I don't believe God wants me to argue the Bible with not near a person. But here's what I do know. He's saying right here to these these disciples, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, meaning to me, salvation what is what gets you into heaven. But yet people will go and think, well, no, it's got to be something that I do. It's got to be something that I'm capable of doing because I have to earn my salvation. Meaning we like to, to do works for our salvation. And you know what? No man can do any work to add to the free gift of salvation. It ain't going to happen. A person is not going to get to heaven based on their only good works that they have. It ain't going to happen. 
people's going to get to heaven by simple belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. But yet people will argue, well, you got to be baptized. You got to be in, in the holiness church. You got to be a Pentecostal. You got to be a tongue talker. Let me tell you something. There's going to be a many a person that's going to be denied entrance into heaven all because they thought that their works was going to get them there. And Jesus is going to know who it is that he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. I didn't know you. I had no idea who you was. Depart from me. Let me go. Just people's going to say, oh, but Lord, we did this and we did that and we did the other. Yeah, that's exactly true that there's people that is going to be told to get away from me. Oh, but Lord, we did this and we did that. And we was we was a member of the holiness church. Lord, we paid our tithe. Yeah, he's going to say, yeah, you did. You paid your tithe, but you didn't believe in me. Like this verse says, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child. What does that mean to me? It means that I need to know the plan of salvation. The plan of salvation, I'm just going to tell you the verses. You go back and look them up for yourself. Romans 3.23. That's the first one. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Romans 6 and verse 23. Romans 10 and verse 9. And Romans 10 and verse 13. Then you go over to 1 John. That's in the back of the Bible. Right there before you get to Revelation is 1 John 5 and 13. And then you come back to, to St. John the one in the front of the Bible, in front of the New Testament. And there's a verse in there that is named John 5 and 24. And then you can ice, you can ice the cake with John 3, 16. But keep the verses in that order. When you go back and look at the verses, go back in the order that I called them out in. Understand the verses. Understand what the verses are saying. And let them verses bring unto you salvation. And when you have simple salvation, then you're entering heaven as a little child. When you add works to getting into heaven, you're not coming as a little child. You're coming as a con artist. You're coming as a thief in the night. And Jesus is going to know who's trying to con their way into heaven. And you're not going to be able to come to Jesus that way. That's the reason he says here, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, meaning a child, a simple belief system. I've got a little six-year-old knucklehead grandson, and when I do see him and he comes out here, I try to play with him rough. But here's what I do. I try to play with him knowing that I'm protecting him. I want him to grow. I want him to get tough. I want him to get out of that baby state. I want him to... To, to use his arms and use his muscles. He's getting to the point now where he needs to utilize that little body to make it into a growing boy. He'll be seven in November, so I want to do my part 
and to try to bring him along so that he knows how to hit a ball, that he knows how to catch a football, that he knows how to throw the football. See, he's a child. I can't make him into anything more than he is right now, but gradually he's going to get seven, and then eight, and then nine, and then ten. And before you know it, he'll be 13. He'll be a teenager. So see, you got to bring him a little bit by little bit in simple faith. I would never want my grandson to feel like that I would endanger him in any way. I wouldn't want him to feel that that Papa wouldn't protect him. I would want him to know that Papa is there to protect him. And that's what the Lord is saying right here. Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. The little child part is simple salvation. That's it. Bottom line, simple salvation. Elderly Ministry is the YouTube channel. Elderlyministry.com is the website. You can get a hold of me there. If I can help you, yell. Thank you all for watching.